Hello and welcome back to our Galactic Ruler Let's Teach Poorly uh, Tutorial 2. All right, as always, music is by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. And uh, for this episode, we are doing Chapter 2, System Controls. This time we're playing the Raptorin. Okay, we're going to uh, learn how to do some things like common actions players will take at the start of the game. Game speed's restricted for right now, but hopefully we'll get that back and running pretty soon. Okay, so we want to begin research of high pressure storage. I'm going to pause here. This is going to tell us how to do it. As you see in, in, so in tutorial one, uh, these tool tips come up to kind of give you an indication of where to go. I'm going to mostly be ignoring those. I'll be clearing them and doing it myself so that you can kind of follow along as you need to, but uh, it's more distracting than anything else while we're trying to go through this in this video. So what we're going to do is go into the research here, and you can see this is what we're currently researching. This is what's available to research. This is what we know. And then this would be for building research stations or research facilities, but they only happen on planet surfaces, so you wouldn't have access to that button here. As we saw in tutorial one, you can make it so that the governor can't do things. And in this case, you can turn off the research capability so that it will not automatically line up some research that you could do. Uh, when I first attempted to do this tutorial, I was talking way too much and I didn't have the game paused. And it started to do the research all by itself, which wasn't a problem for the tutorial that I had to restart it for other reasons, but uh, just something I noted and I wanted to bring up. Uh, the other thing you can note is if you go into this Governor Priorities button here, which is like a little HAL 9000 uh, eyeball, you'll have options here under the Planetary Governor where you can set your general priorities for research, which if you have this unlocked, the Governor will use to determine what to add next to the queue. So, they want us to begin research of high pressure storage. There we go. That's high pressure storage going. And you'll see it now here. As it ticks over the day, it'll turn green and then it'll start to fill up. And then once it's filled up completely, it's done. You can pause it and cancel it and do whatever you need. All right, so now we're going to bin begin production of a survey drone. You do that from the Defense Department this is what you're currently building and what's pending to be built based on the number of uh, shipyards you have or production facilities if you're doing it on ground. This is what's available to be built and this allows you to build facilities on the map here like this. Okay, so we are building a survey drone that's going to be Space Patrol, but you can see there's fighters, cap ships, Space Patrol, and we don't have space transport right now, so the total in the list is zero. So we're going to add a survey drone here to the build, and you'll see it's listed. And now it's pending, and at the tick of the turn, it will start to build it. As you can see over here, the messages pop up when certain things are happening. So we've got our research and development going, production of units, this is all part coming from the tooltips. We can clear these messages right here. The way it works, it's a little bit counterintuitive when you first do it, but basically this button will only clear messages of a type that you have already seen before. If it is of a type that's come up that you've never seen before, it will clear everything except for that. Uh, and that's essentially what's happened here, say production of units. It, it doesn't clear it because we've never seen it before. If I click again, I guess maybe, no, maybe it won't. Maybe it needs to make it, you have to do it explicitly the first time, I guess, yeah. Okay, let's identify our survey priorities. We're gonna set a survey hotspot. So hotspots show up here under recon department hotspots, and you can click this to get the fuller list, and you can add hotspots from here. Also, you can right click hotspot and pick a type. We're going to do survey and then click. Now, as we saw the last time, it doesn't matter where you do the right click. The only thing that changes is if you're on like a world like this, it will give you a few more options like to list all of your facilities. But for most commands, you're, you can do that from anywhere. And then you say hotspot, 
survey, and then left click where you want it to go, and then it'll pop up there. And then from here, you have a few options. So priority level, the force size involved, what kind of a mission it is, offensive, defensive, or balanced, the type that it is, and whether or not it has support. Obviously with a survey, most of these don't matter, but if it's a hotspot for combat purposes, then these will come in handy. All right, now we just gotta wait for the next tick to come along, there we go. Now we're gonna launch our space fighters. All right, so our space fighters are gonna be listed here in the command department, yes, thank you. And as you can see, we still have this ticked up, so you can tick it up or down if you need more space. These are the ones in reserve, deployed and selected. We're going to go ahead and deploy all of our reserves. Boom, boom, boom. Done, and now they are in deployed. So now we're going to survey our system. So we have to survey all the worlds in our system. It says this objective may take some time, but you can complete other objectives while surveying the system. So here's how you're gonna do this. There's a few ways that you can automate this process. In the tutorial, they don't really give you the information on what you need, so here's what you're gonna do. You have a couple of options, like I said. The first way, the way that you'll probably do it more likely in the game itself, is to use the space unit initiative set here. None, low, medium, high, and full. If you set it to anything above none, I believe, uh, well, it definitely has to be above none, but I don't know if there's a threshold on this for the surveys, but they will automatically do what they do if you have them on a general automation from here. The other way to do it, which is how we're gonna do it for the purposes of this tutorial, is we're gonna go ahead and select this guy. You can see now he's selected and he's in the list here. And I pop that, there we go. What I'm gonna do is I am going to look at his individual rules of engagement right here and I'm going to automate the unit. I'm gonna turn that on. So that once I've got him going, once I've got him started on a survey, he will then proceed with surveys over and over and over and over. One thing to note, this guy is a survey drone, not a survey ship. But if he's a survey ship, he will be able to travel interstellar. If you have one that's able to travel interstellar, but you don't want it automatically automatically to do that when you have it automated, I found that turning governor control off, making it so that this has a little padlock on, will prevent it from traveling to other systems, but it will not prevent it from surveying the system that it's currently in. So that's a very handy combo. Uh, the automate unit and governor control, or the space unit initiative and governor control when you're dealing with uh, surveyors. It's also incredibly useful to turn off governor control when you're dealing with battle groups where you've basically got a group of ships that you want to control yourself. You can select the whole battle group and then turn off governor control. That way they won't get to their destination and then kind of higgly piggly pick, pick what they want to do next. So we're going to go ahead and just, just for the purposes of, the, of illustration, we're gonna turn off governor control even though the survey drone can't go to other systems, uh, it, it won't make a difference. Uh, we're gonna do that anyway. So now we're gonna go ahead and do a survey. We can either click here or what I prefer to do, control, right click, survey. It's already gonna survey the hotspot, but if that weren't the hotspotted space, once it became available to do its own thing after the survey, it would then immediately go to the hotspot that is uh, a survey hotspot and then proceed from there. Uh, basically, this is a preferential spot rather than just like that's where it goes and then it stops. All right, so this is telling us about planet types and atmospheres, uh, but basically the way that works is you're going to see here this is a medium planet. It's got a thin atmosphere, but it is breathable. Once this guy is done, he'll tell that will will tell us more about that once we've got that done. But give me a second here. Okay, we've got our game speed unlocked. That's good. Nav point map locating, uh, we can do that from here. Planets, unexplored planets, saved nav points. You can create a nav point wherever you want and then go to it. So you can create little uh, waypoints and uh, points of interest for yourself. 
Now it's asking us to begin construction of an orbital shipyard. But what we're going to be watching here is you can see that this is spinning around, that he's surveying. Now it's 75% done. That's my little survey ship guy going. There, now that's complete. Now I want to pause and I want to show you this. So we looked over here, we saw this was a medium planet, thin atmosphere, breathable. It's got a population of 628 million. Over here, we have small moon, dense, hostile. Now, it is still landable. It's not a lava world or a, a gas giant, but it is hostile. So you'll never really be able to create a full colony there. You can make an outpost and it's just kind of, it's going to be a slow grower. Uh, but that's the planet surface there. And those red dots there, those are the different kinds of hotspots, right? So not hotspots, I should say, but like um, points where you can pick up agriculture. Well, none on this planet, particularly uh, metal ore and energy. So that's useful when you're surveying uh, planets and figuring out where you're going to land to exploit. That's always a useful bit of information. So notice how now he's going to go do his own thing because I have set him to automate. You can see here if I've got him selected. He's on automation. Now you should also note that there's also general rules of engagement, global I should say. When you don't have anybody selected, you can do the same thing here. And these are some other options, contact options, loss tolerance, initiative, speed, and so on. Uh, accept changes means that it's that a unit that you have selected. So for example, if I select him and go into his individual rules of engagement, I can make it so that if I change the global rules, he will or will not be affected by those. Uh, a lot of this stuff is fiddly detail, which I'm not going to go into and the tutorials aren't uh, going to teach you, but it is worth checking out to see if they're valuable to you. Uh, if you are a better player of this game than I am, you will probably find this stuff fairly useful. So he's going to go off. You can see where he's going by that little purple line and he's going over there next. So. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my speed just a tick, and we're going to begin construction of an orbital shipyard. Now, if you recall, the way to do that easiest is right click, build, and then we're going to build orbital shipyard, and then left click where we want it. Ta da! And now we can see we've got one building over here. There's already one here, but now we're building a second one. Okay, and now we're going to be asked to make an engineering ship. Engineers are consumable ships. When they do their task, they basically de demolish themselves and use their parts to build the thing that you want uh, to make. So, here's what we're going to do. We need to add an engineering ship to the ship production queue. Coming down here, over to available. It's a capital ship type. I just happen to know that. You don't necessarily know that by the name or anything like that. Uh, but you can go through the list. It's not that big and add that engineer and then we are supposed to wait until it builds now it's building and now we want to add three interceptors to production with continuous build and what continuous build means is uh, there we go boom 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 there we go three is that it just they go into pending and depending on how many shipyards you have you may be able to put, put some in production in parallel otherwise it'll just queue them up Okay, so now we have to claim ownership of a planet. So we're going to use our engineer to build an orbital station on another planet. See, we've got one right there. So I'm going to pause real quick and uh, talk about this a little bit. This is a gas giant. You can see there, medium planet, no atmosphere, non-landable. No ore availability, but high energy availability if you put energy collectors around it. This guy's about to go to this one here. Let's go ahead and make him go a little bit faster. Boom, done. That was quick. Uh, this one is medium moon none hostile. So we can land there if we wanted to, but on this one, we cannot. No surface to view. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna use an engineer to build an orbital station on another planet. If you want to do the tutorial the way that it wants you to, do not use your engineer to build an orbital station on a planet in your same orbital line because it will only extend, it'll extend the territory of your homeworld. It will not create a new colony. They don't mention that, I don't think, but just be aware of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that engineer, we're gonna select him, and we're gonna come over here and we're gonna control 
right click, build an orbital station. And once he gets there, he's going to dismantle himself and then build the orbital station. Because this is a gas giant, we cannot put an outpost on the surface, which means that if we want it to be a full colony, it's going to need an orbital station and an orbital storage. Storage is necessary for it to, to send and receive resources. Alternatively, you will want a spaceport. If you are able to land on the planet's surface, you'll build an outpost, and when you build an outpost, it automatically creates a spaceport. That takes up the space, that takes the place of an orbital storage. You do not need an orbital storage if you already have a spaceport. When you first start your first true game, the very first thing the game will want you to do is build a spaceport on your homeworld, and you'll do that first thing, and then you will then have access to the merchant AI, which is used for trading among the factions. It is kind of this global, passive, non-factionalized um, non uh, trading network that does not depend on relationships with other, uh, with other factions. It's just this general pool that you can use to trade on the global, global scale, or the interstellar scale, as it were. So we're gonna go ahead and let him do that. Now we're gonna come down here and watch him. Boom, orbital station constructed. Now we see that there's a supply area here. Set up our colony to trade. We're gonna build an orbital storage, like it says. Okay, so one thing I should mention, this now indicates that there is a, a faction ownership here, and that's ours. If I wanted to, I could turn off supply levels, but I leave it on in here just so we can get this nice coloration. That essentially means that if I bring a ship into this zone, it will top up its energy. If it's outside of a, a supply level zone, it will eventually run out of energy over time. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and build an orbital storage, but I wanna say a couple of things first about all these little icons here. We're gonna go ahead and clear these out. So you can see here, this is Vuna. And if I'm just clicked over here, this is our blazon, this is our faction, that's us, right? If I come over here and look at Vuna, notice that little uh, disc right there. That is the colony's flag. Colonies in Galactic Ruler are independent to a very large degree, unlike in, say, Stellaris and so on. These are not completely dominated by your faction. You have to trade with them diplomatically. You have to have communication with them in a way that's a little bit more realistic than most Space 4Xs do. So, when it's in this position like this, it means that we're dealing with stuff on our faction level, but we are currently selecting one of our colonies, and we can talk to it from here, from the diplomatic screen. We can talk to it right there. We're not going to be able to, we're not going to do that yet because we want to build the orbital storage first, but we'll see why. Now, what you can do is you can click here and it flips. Now I am in control of the colony and I can set up things for the colony itself. And my blazon is here, my, the main faction. This is telling me this is the uh, parent faction of this colony. It's a very handy tool and you will be using it constantly. So get familiar with it. Flip back and forth. You will get the double blaze on whenever you are selected on a hex that is belongs to one of your colony factions. This will also be the case if you are, I believe, if you are selected on um, another faction entirely, you'll be able to do uh, communication with them that way. Uh, I could be wrong about the blaze on. I, I haven't. Uh, I didn't think about it, but uh, but at the very least, most of the time when you're playing the game, your your colonies will you'll show up like this and you'll. You're flipping back and forth quite a bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and build an orbital storage. There are two ways to do that. When you deposit an engineer to build a station, it does provide, I'm gonna show you right now, it does provide your new colony with a little bit of finished goods. And you use finished goods to make uh, facilities. So there's enough here to build an orbital storage. You could, however, if you wanted to, build another planetary engineer over here, send him out, and have him build an orbital storage. You can do that. But we're gonna do it the way they kinda want us to. We're gonna go ahead and build orbital storage, and boom, we can click there. But I should make it, make it clear, I don't have to do this from the colony. 
I can do this from Homeworld as well. So I can go here, I can go ahead and right click, build storage and boom. Now that is going to build the orbital storage right there. Done. And once that's completed, we'll be able to establish, okay, we're, we're gonna establish trade ourselves, but uh, once that's completed, we will be able to, ah, stop making a mess. We will be able to uh, trade back and forth with this new colony. If it doesn't have storage, you cannot trade with it. And in fact, if I try it right now, I'll show you what goes on. Negotiate with a selected region. We have these existing agreements. We can, for example, now give it some finished goods. Let's say we want to give it some finished goods to be able to build some more stuff. We can drag this up, add to the offer, request nothing in return so that we just send it to them. And then we hit this green button. But we're going to get a message, which I, I won't bother going through it. We'll get a message saying unable to complete the trade. That's because there's no storage at the colony yet to be able to receive those goods. So that won't work. But once that's built, that's how you can supply your colony. And that's how you can get your colony to supply you. And you'll probably have to do a lot of that with energy. So. Pirates have been spotted. We want to establish trade with the merchant AI. So we begin construction of a spaceport on your home world. So we don't have one. So we're gonna go and do that here. Come down here. This is our main city, but we can build a spaceport pretty much anywhere we want. Mainly though, we're gonna to wanna to build it right here. So we're gonna go ahead and go build military, Spaceport. Spaceport appears also in urban, I think, the urban list, if I'm remembering right. Let's take a look. Build urban. No, it's not. Uh, where does it go? Uh, I think it appears in two places, but I could be wrong. No, I guess it does not. So it just builds, it shows in military. So we're going with Spaceport. Left click. There we go. And you can see in the list now, it's slowly building. Or it will start slowly building. There we go. You can start to communicate with the merchant AI as soon as you have a spaceport on your home world. All right, so we're now going to set trade targets for imports and exports. So we're gonna do that down here. Set agriculture exports and energy imports. So these are the resources here, agriculture, ore, energy, and finished goods. So we're gonna set agriculture, and this is our target supply. We can go all the way export, down like this, or essentially import to a number, uh, to an amount of stock that will last for X number of years. If you double click on any slider, it will center the slider. So let's set the trade targets for imports and exports. Set ag agriculture exports. So we're gonna say export, and then for energy, we're going to import. We only have sustainability for 111 days. That means it's we've got 111 days of stock. We need a lot more than that. Let's say, let's make it 8.3 years. Boom. Now, a few other things to note in here. There are some other things you can do. This tells us our production and our usage, our stock and our trades. Same thing with ore. You can see here, we produce, but use more than we produce. So we have to trade some stuff generally to bring them in. Energy, we, you will always find that you produce vastly less than you need. You have a stock to start with, but it's gonna deplete really quickly. So you need to do a lot of energy importing. You can't import unless you're also exporting because you do have to have relatively balanced trades with the merchant AI. The merchant AI takes care of what those trades are but you do have to have an import option and an output, out export option, otherwise it won't proceed. You can also determine your industry output, which is a percentage of either capacity or demand. You can also then ration based on uh, how much you want them to be producing and be giving to your, to your citizens. Obviously your citizens might be a little bit pissed off if your rationing is too severe. Energy rationing at 123% is ridiculous. We're gonna just, for the sake of my hating and enraged about energy, I'm gonna put it at 100. Okay. Now we're gonna set the governor priority for conservation. So that was at that HAL 9000 thing that I was telling you about. You go there, 
and you come over to the planetary governor and we're going to say under resources conservation done now another thing you should note every governor can have priorities so if i go over here and click on the colony blazon and switch it over i can then come to the hal 9000 and set the priorities for the colony the colony priorities tend to start they start with outpost focus uh, but you have these other ones that are basically full lists but you can make your own choices it is generally recommended that what you'll want to do is set to trade relations both for you and for your colonies so that they will trickle trade some things back and forth to each other not a lot but you know enough in some cases so do trickle, trickle trading and then immigration and growth or emigration so you want people to immigrate to your colony you do this and if you want your home world to send people out again trade relations turned on emigration turned on and now the merchant ai will transport people from your home world to your colony and you can set that information up for every single colony and set it up however you want now we're going to declare war on the pirates come down here Look at these guys. Now, okay, so uh, this tells me what I didn't wasn't 100% sure about before. You do not get a secondary blaze on if you are selecting on another faction entirely. It's a faction that's not one of your own. So it'll only appear if it's one of your own factions, which is good to know if it's a colony uh, sub-faction. All right, declare war. At war. Teach the pirates the cost of war. We're going to at least eliminate at least four pirate ships. We've been given a whole bunch of destroyers. Okay, that's nice. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over here. Ah, oh, look at that, our deployed units. Um, and we've got some reserve units. Let's go ahead and deploy these guys. And we're going to take all of our deployed units, not the survey drones because they aren't going to be useful. And we're going to leave that planetary engineer there. Now we see we have seven selected units. And we're going to come down here and kick some butt. I'm just going to send them over here for now, just nearby. But notice, OK, so now they're out in deep space. Notice this. It's very, 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 very important. Two things to notice. One, interceptors are really fast. <laughs> These other guys are moving slowly. So let's go ahead and actually select all of these guys and stage them a little bit farther back. You can also have them do formation moves so that they won't actually uh, get away from each other, but eh. But here's the, here's the real important thing to note. We select this guy, his energy level is dropping. And that will continue to drop as long as he's out of supply. The easiest way to keep supply in uh, space when you're not near one of your own planets is to build, which I probably can't do, yeah, a, a planetary transport. Planetary transports will pick up and carry supply with them. So if you attach them to your group of fighters or your battle group or what have you, and have them go along with, they will keep them in supply until the transport loses all of its supply levels. That is very critical and it will come in handy during the course of these tutorials, I'm pretty sure. Because if you're dilly-dallying, if you're dilly-dallying, that guy's gonna drop to zero and you're gonna be like, well, poop. I can no, can no longer finish the, uh, the tutorial. So, here we go. These guys are here. We're gonna come down. Oh, unit captured in a raid. We've captured four, uh, one of our units has been captured. Yeah, the, that's them. Uh, because uh, our interceptors are uh, kind of weak sauce. All right, well, we slowed this down so that it comes a little bit better. There we go. Let's get these guys. There, now we want it. Yeah, my interceptors did not make it. Let's go kill some guys here. All 
right, we did it. Now we want to capture the orbital station. Notice that little there, it says low energy. It's actually not super, super low, but it is pretty low. And that happens because of it's in combat. So here's what we're gonna do. So that things don't get wonky. This one might be closer. Let's go ahead and get them, get them resupplied. And I do recommend doing this uh, just as a matter of course after that part of the combat. Send them up. They should start resupplying shortly. Oh, well, maybe, oh no, wait a minute, they won't. Ah, because this guy, ah, see now, this is the problem. This guy has no energy. He has nothing to supply them with. Never mind. Come over here. Oh dear. And I've gone ahead and done the thing I should I told you not to do. Look at that. Zero energy. Let me see if I can. Oh, I probably can't. No transports. All right. Well, that's fun. We're going to have to continue. I'm going to have to restart this entire episode. Uh, well, this tutorial, I should say, and come up to this point and do it proper. So yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back here. Now, one thing to note, when you do tutorials, it always randomizes the, I mean, it, does, it uses the uh, random gen uh, galaxy generator. So this is going to look very different from what we had before, which is fine. Uh, we uh, have gone through, it took me just like a couple minutes to get us back to where we are here. So we got to declare war on the pirates, which are now over on this side. Oops, there we go. Declare war. Now we're going to teach them the cost of war. So we're going to take these guys. Oh, actually, we're probably not going to take those guys. We're going to take these guys, the destroyers. There we are. OK, let's take our destroyers. Gonna slow this down, tick. Gonna pick them up, bring them over here. They're a little bit closer this time around, which is actually helpful for us in terms of the energy levels. If we wanna look, oh, let me actually get my music going again. There we go. 494 out of 588. And uh, once we do the fight, I will send them back, but I will send them back to a place that actually has energy for the supply levels. <laughs> oh, that was dumb. I showed my whole ass right there, didn't I? Okay. Let's get you in there. Done, okay. We've got three left. Uh, I think we lost one, didn't we? It doesn't say we lost one. All right, well, maybe I just had three. Uh, we're down to 79. Oof, oof, magoof. Okay, let's get him back up there real quick. Come on, crossing my finger. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I did it again. Did it again. Yeah, this is, a, this is a problem with the tutorial. This is a problem with tutorial too. It's always been this issue. Um, what you may have to do, if you run into that problem, yeah, I don't have anybody. You may have to just try to do it, like just straight up do it. All right, we're gonna try that again. And this time I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the whole process of doing it super fast. All right, high pressure research, done. It's 
See if I can get it, get ahead of the two tool tips. Survey drone. Done. Yeah, I wish I were. I wish there were a planetary transport available in this tutorial that you could just use, um, because then that would that would solve the problem. Uh, nope, that's not what I want. There we go. Uh, be, because you could theoretically research all the way up to that spot, but it takes a minute, and that's not what you're supposed to be learning in the tutorial. So, eh. but it would be nice if you could. That way, you could actually learn about doing supply correctly because you really never want to go on a on a rampage without transports handy to provide supply out in deep space you just you just do not there we go Now, once you learn how to play the game, it, it really gets to be this quick, right? Like, it's, it becomes nice and fast, and uh, you can. there's a lot to do in the early game, especially if you have pirates turned on, which, I, as I mentioned in the first video, I don't recommend for your pl first playthrough, but it is certainly doable, uh, and there's a lot to do at that point. All right, let's go zippity-doo. Okay, pirates spotted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's not that one I want. Okay, now we need an orbital shipyard. Build, orbital shipyard, boom. Now we need the engineers. Done. And then we need three interceptors, done. Now we gotta claim ownership of a planet. Let's go and grab this engineer. And where, is he, where are we gonna put it? Where's our surveyor guy? Did we lose our surveyor guy? We did. Let's send him up this way. I think our surveyor, surveyor got eaten. Boom. All right, there's a lava world for us. Orbital station. Oh, and, like, and the pirates are super close this time, which is even better but we're not gonna make that same mistake three times in a row. <laughs> oh boy. All right, orbital shipyard. Or no, orbital storage here, sorry. Yes, orbital storage. And then we need the spaceport. Oh, no, now I did that right. Build, no, come on. Now, oh God, now I've just got the yips. Uh, there we go. Spaceport. Trade targets. Let's get rid of all those. Boom. 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 Done. Conservation. Ah. Done. Declare war on the pirates. Where are these guys? No, stop. You don't want that. You want this. War, teach them a lesson. Let's deploy our destroyers. All right, now, because I don't want to be stupid again, we're going to go ahead and say this is tutorial one, tutorial two, <laughs> uh, which I probably should have done, and I, I should have recommended it from the minute we started these episodes. <laughs> That you should always save your tutorials because I didn't wouldn't have had to do all this. Done. All right, let's capture the planet. Now, this guy is fine actually. This guy still has 345. The rest of these are at about half, so that's okay. So you'll see green, yellow, and then it'll go to red and then they'll just stop. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and capture the orbital. Control, right click, capture orbital. Or you can do it from the command panel. Oops, ah, there we go. Done. That was quick, we took over that station. 
and now it is ours. You can see here, we now have the ability to flip back and forth. This is now one of our colonies. So let's see what's left to be done. Survey the system. Okay, so the only thing left is the survey. Did we lose any of our, oh, it looks like we, we ah, there's our drone. I think the only thing they have left to do is survey over here. There, that's done. And chapter two is complete. Yay, we're gonna play on for a minute and then retire. But yeah, so two pitfalls, as you have seen, you don't wanna run out of energy with your destroyers. So either you wanna just, you know, not turtle up. You just wanna just complete the orbital bombardment and be done with it. Or you, 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 you wanna know if you have enough energy. If you've got enough room, if you've got a little a short distance, you could probably make it back. But uh, at the very least, I do then highly recommend saving the game before you go to war, just so you don't have to start the whole thing over again. And then the other pitfall is you will have to finish the complete survey of the system before the tutorial actually finishes. But obviously you've already learned the process. You don't actually need to end it at that point. So if it looks like it's stuck, you've done everything, it's probably that you're just missing the survey of the last little bit in the system. Anyway, that was a long one, but uh, hopefully you've gotten a little bit of knowledge on how to uh, do all of these things here, and hopefully you've learned some valuable lessons about giving your guys enough energy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.